Welcome to Isina Mova Tutoring. Today we're covering Euclidean geometry. And today we're focusing on grade 11 and grade 12 Euclidean geometry. And we're going to start with triangles and then continue through. By the end of this lesson, I trust you're going to get total for Euclidean geometry. So with triangles, as you would know, we have the equilateral triangle. We have the isosceles triangle. We have the scalene triangle and the right angled triangle. Now you have to know the properties of these triangles to solve the problems based on them. Now stay with me as I take you through this long journey. Now if there's a theorem we've learned in earlier grades is that in any triangle, angle the interior angles always sum up to 180 degrees. Now it could be the case that all three angles are equal or it could be the case that all three are not equal or another case where only two are equal or even a case where one is 90 degrees. However what we do know in any triangle when you add the interior angles 1, 2 and 3 you will get 180 degrees. So depending on the interior angles relationships that's how we'll know what triangles we have. And like I've mentioned, we've got the equilateral triangle. We've got the isosceles triangle. We've got the scalene triangle. And we've got the right angled triangle. Here we have triangle ABC. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. And the reason is from our theorem, sum of angles in a triangle. We know that sum of angles in a triangle are supplementary. So the interior angles A plus B plus C is equals to 180 degrees. Okay, now let's look at our first type of triangle, the isosceles triangle. This triangle has two equal angles as well as two equal sides. For example, triangle CDE, which we see over here. Side CD is the same as side DE. What you have to know is the angle opposite side DE is the same as the angle opposite side CD. And this is because side CD is the same as side DE. And that's another thing you need to know about the isosceles triangle. Angles opposite equal sides are equal. Please do not forget that. So angle C will be the same as angle E. So here we have triangle ABC and we're told side AB is the same as side AC. And the angle opposite side AB is angle C and the angle opposite side AC is angle B. That would mean angles B and C are the same. Now what I like about the isosceles triangle is that with one angle you're able to get the other two angles. Let's take a second look at our triangle ABC and we're told that side AB and side AC are equal and we only give an angle B which is 30 degrees and that would also mean angle C is 30 degrees. Now if you still remember angles opposite equal sides are equal so angles B and C are 30 degrees and this is based off of our theorem angles opposite equal sides. And to figure out angle A, we know that in any given triangle, angle A plus angle B plus angle C will sum up to 180 degrees. And this theorem would go sum of interior angles in a triangle. So with that equation, we'll be able to figure out angle A. And in this case, it's 120 degrees because when we substitute angle B is 30 and angle C is 30 as well. And when you add them together, you get 60 and transpose them to the other side, it becomes negative. And angle A will be 180 minus 60 degrees. And that's how we get 120 degrees. Okay, here's still another example. We know it's isosceles because there are two equal sides. And that's how you spot an isosceles. It's either two equal sides or two equal angles. We're told side AB and side AC are equal. And only one angle, angle A, which is 110 degrees. 
And since we now know that in any triangle, angle A plus angle B plus angle C will sum up to 180 degrees. And the reason is sum of interior angles in a triangle. But we do know angle B is the same as angle C. And the reason is angles of opposite equal sides. But I still do not know angles B and angle C, and I have to figure them out. And since angles B and C are unknown angles, let's term them as X. And this is because angles B and C are the same. Now when we substitute from our first equation, angles A plus B plus C is equals to 180 degrees. We substitute angle A, which is 110 degrees, angle B, which is X, and angle C, which is also X. Now let's transpose the 110 degrees, which will be negative, and then divide by 2. And the answer we get for X is 35 degrees, and it applies with both angles B and C. So in other words, to get angles B and C, which are equal, in a case where we given an unequal angle, notice how angle A is an included angle according to trigonometry, if I have sides AB and AC. So when you get the unequal angle, to find the other two, you will say 180 minus the unequal angle, in this case it's 110, divided by 2. In that way, you will get angles B and C at the same time. And the great thing about the isosceles triangle, even when you're given one angle. Now this depends on whether it's the equal angles or just the odd angle. If it's the odd angle, remember, you will take 180 minus the given odd angle divided by 2. If you're given one from the equal angle, you will know the other equal angle is the same. And when added with the odd angle, would have to sum up to 180 degrees using that first equation you see up there. I trust you understand me, and I hope we're clear with the isosceles. Now let's move to the equilateral triangle. And this name derives from the word equal. And this would also mean the properties in this triangle are equal. If there are three equal angles, then there'll be three equal sides. If there are two equal angles in a triangle, then there'll be two equal sides. And if there are unequal sides in a triangle, that would also mean there'll be no unequal angles. However, we do know in any triangle, when you add the three interior angles together, it will sum up to 180 degrees degrees. And this is from our theorem. Sum of angles in a triangle are supplementary. So in this equilateral triangle, we have side AB that's equal to side AC and BC. And that would mean angle B and angle C as well as angle A are all equal. And if all these angles are equal, then that would mean they are 60 degrees. And we know this by taking 180 degrees and dividing by 3 which is 60 degrees for each angle. Whichever equilateral triangle, and these angles will be 60 degrees. And here we have the right angled triangle, and the reason being is because it has a right angle. Remember we have the acute angle, the right angle, the obtuse angle, and the straight line angle. And what we know about the right angle is that it's of 90 degrees. So the right angle triangle is a triangle with an angle that's 90 degrees. Another thing we know is that the side opposite the right angle is known as the hypotenuse. Also, the right angle triangle is the only triangle where the Pythagoras theorem applies. If you remember this theorem, it's r squared is equals to x squared plus y squared. Let's look at triangle ABC here, and we see that angle C is a right angle, and we see this by the right angle symbol. And with this triangle, 
side AB is the hypotenuse because it's opposite angle C, which is our right angle, and the hypotenuse is our longest side, as you can see in this case. Now the Pythagoras theorem applies here, and remember it's R squared is equals to X squared plus Y squared. X is the horizontal side, and Y is the vertical side, while R is the longest side. So according to this triangle, when we substitute it will be AB squared is equals to AC squared, our horizontal side, plus BC squared. And that's it with our right angle. And now the scalene triangle. I'm not going to touch much on this triangle. All you have to know is that all three angles are not equal and all three sides are not equal. But like in any given triangle, the three interior angles sum up to 180 degrees. Here's a quick example of our scalene triangle. Side BC is definitely not equal to side AC and side AB, which means angle A will not be equal to angle B and C. But fact remains that angle A plus angle B plus angle C sum up to 180 degrees. Okay, now I've been touching on the interior angles of a triangle. Now we do get cases where the triangle has an exterior angle or an angle that's outside of a triangle. Remember the three interior angles when added together sum up to 180 degrees. Now there's an exterior angle of a triangle which has a relationship with the interior angles. So the theorem goes the exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of interior opposite angles, which would mean the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angles when added together, and that is the both of them. Now here's a quick example for better understanding. We have triangle LFM, and if there's something you have to know, you need to make sure that PFM is a straight line, because if it isn't, the theorem is non-existent. Although angle F may be an exterior, but the theorem doesn't apply if it's not a straight line. And so you need to make sure that PFM is a straight line. Now they could tell us that PFM is a straight line, or MF is produced to meet at P. And that would simply mean it's a straight line. What we do know, when you take angle L and angle M and add them together, you get the exterior angle for F. And the reason would be the exterior angle of a triangle. Now just once more, angle L plus angle M is equal to angle F. And the reason is the exterior angle of a triangle. But please ensure that PFM is a straight line. And now you can see that angle F is equal to the interior opposite angles and add them together. And just like that, we get the exterior angle for F.